Hi and welcome back to another video with me, Mark Stoke. Again, as usual, we're going to be talking about Message Center updates and go through all the changes on the Microsoft platform over the last two weeks. I didn't manage to do a video last week. I do apologize about that. I was away on holiday. So today I'll be catching up on all the updates uh, for the last two weeks. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about the team specific updates and we've got 10 of them. So without further ado, we'll jump right in. Uh, so the first uh, message center update here for Microsoft Teams is to opt in to the new Teams Live Events multi-window producer experience. And this is message center MC249608. So up until now, Microsoft Live Event uh, producers have had to manage the event in the main Teams window. But with this update, what's going to happen is they'll have the ability to, uh, to have a separate window for managing the actual event. Uh, this will be rolling out in due course, um, but this update is going to allow uh, those producers to opt in to this new service before ahead of the main launch. So it's going to allow people to go and access the preview um, of it. Um, I don't currently have a date. Um, I think this might be available straight away. Um, there's no date on it. So um, live event producers will always manage live events in the external window. Um, yeah, so if they opt in to it, then it'll always happen. Um, I don't have a date on it, so I'm going to assume that this is available now. Um, we can go and check this afterwards. Okay. The second update is a, uh, an update to Microsoft Teams Room, uh, shared wirelessly from iOS or Android uh, Teams app. Um, and this is Mesh Center MC249622. Uh, so this is an update as of April the 14th. Um, so the timeline for this has been updated. Um, so with this update, end users can wirelessly share content off their mobile devices, iOS and Android. Um, and this will be, they'll be able to share it to a Teams Room, so uh, basically a big TV. In the, um, in the meeting room uh, that can be shared for groups. Um, and then you, they can do that without needing the first session. Um, so this will, uh, rollout will begin on this the end of April. Uh, previously, this was going to be mid-April um, and they'll be completed by mid-May, which was previously late April. So it's slipped by a couple of weeks on the rollout. Uh, so just a little update to what you should be aware of there. Moving on again. Um, so uh, the next update is customized backgrounds in Microsoft Teams meeting video coming to mobile devices. Um, this is Message Center MC249625. Um, and this is um, basically allowing the feature. So in the Teams desktop app, we've had the ability to change our uh, background so we can blur our backgrounds if we're working from home or if we don't want to show uh, the background the office we're working in, we can actually blur or have a custom picture for our background. I think we've all got quite uh, familiar and used to that feature now. Uh, but this feature is now coming to mobile devices, so to iOS and Android. Um, so the rollout for iOS will begin early April and should be completed by mid-April. So the point of recording this video, this should now be available. And for Android, um, this is going to be early May and should be completed by mid-May. Um, so no other changes, nothing for you to do. This will just be available in the app. So maybe you want to go and let your users know about this feature update. This next update is Microsoft Teams uh, introducing organization-wide backgrounds uh, into preview mode. Um, and this is Mesh Center MC249777. So up until now, as we're aware, um, users have the ability to change their um, backgrounds. So there's a stock uh, set of images that Microsoft makes available. So you've got your gym background, you've got your bookcase, your office, um, your luxury apartment. Um, so we have these available to us, um, but what this is gonna do is give the ability for organizations to provide backgrounds organization wide. So we could maybe have a, a nice logo for our company as a background or a picture of the office. So we can actually now, or we're gonna be able to distribute these background images um, across the whole organization. So we can give a consistent um, feel and a branded feel to our backgrounds on our team meeting. Um, this is going to uh, roll out late April. It should be completed by late May. Like I said, this is just a preview version. So it's gonna be people in preview. Um, it's not going to be um, very available just yet. Um, so once this feature is in preview, anyone within your organization can view the backgrounds and apply them across calls and things using the background settings panel. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so images can be either PNG or JPEG format. There should be no smaller than 360 by 360 pixels and no larger than 2048 by 2048 pixels. Um, and you can host up to 50 images for your tenant. Um, I think that's gonna be quite nice. Um, I think given a consistent branded background is definitely beneficial. So I like that update. Okay, this next update, um, tasks by planner and to-do app names uh, will be shortened to just tasks within Microsoft Teams. 
This is Mesher Center MC250528. Uh, so this is a reminder. So last year, Microsoft did announce the public preview um, of tasks in Teams. Um, at the same time, they also announced the planned three-stage name and sequence for how app names will appear, appear in Teams. And this update reflects the final stage where they will shorten tasks by planner and to do to simply tasks for simplicity brevity and to better reflect the app um, combining the to-do and planner experiences. Um, you'll still be able to find the app by search of planner or to-do. And this will not impact the functionality of the app, it's the naming of the app. Uh, this will begin rolling out in early May uh, and should be completed around mid-May. Um, the thing for you to do, um, this will just happen automatically, but again, you might want to let your users aware that this name will change. Hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory to them, but again, awareness is, uh, is the key to all of them. Next, we have an update uh, where we can create tasks uh, from Teams chats or channel posts. Uh, so this feature will allow users to create tasks from Teams chats or channel posts and enable them to identify tasks that arise naturally in Teams conversations um, while ensuring important work isn't overlooked. This will roll out on Microsoft Teams desktop and mobile. This is quite nice. So I've seen this in Outlook a little bit where it um, identifies if there's a task uh, been discussed and that's if you want to add it to your task list. So this is now going to be rolled out into Microsoft Teams, um, uh, chats and channel posts. So I quite like this. I think this is a useful feature. Um, I use it quite a lot in Outlook. Um, this rollout will begin early May and should be completed by late May as well. Um, this will automatically um, start appearing for your users and nothing you need to do to turn it on. Uh, but again, you might just want to make them aware that this feature is coming as a good um, experience for them. Uh, so I think awareness is, is good them to have. This next update is to um, allow Teams meetings to support view only attendees. And this is Mesher Center MC250956. Um, so originally communicated in February 21, um, Teams meetings are limited to 300 users. Um, and if someone tries to join a meeting after it reaches capacity, they're un unable to do so. Uh, so with this update, meeting organizers um, who are assigned an appropriate license will be able to host a Teams meeting that has an overflow capacity. What this overflow capacity will allow um, to happen is that people can, uh, sorry, up to 20,000 you only attendees can join that meeting. So only the first 300 will be able to participate in the meeting, but another 20,000 after will be able to view the meeting, uh, but not actually in, in it by chat or things like that or post or like, um, presenter capability. Um, up to 20,000 view only attendees may join a meeting from late February through the end of June in order to accommodate heightened remote work scenarios. After July the 1st, Microsoft will support only 10,000 view only attendees. So there's not that there. So originally it was 20,000, but now it's going to be reduced down to 10,000. Um, this capability will be available to users with the following licenses. Office 365 and Microsoft 365 E3, E5, A3, and A5 Business Standard Business Premium. For the rest of 2021, Microsoft are offering temporary availability to Teams users to try the feature of their existing commercial. Okay, so how will this affect your organization? So, just recap some of the points. After a meeting reaches capacity of 300 users, people will be able to join as view only attendees, the maximum number limited by phase. Organizers cannot remove view only attendees from a meeting. View only attendees will not impact the normal interaction available for regular attendees. Uh, um, once the view only attendee limit is reached, no additional view only attendees will be allowed to join. View only attendees will follow all lobby and security policy mechanisms. Uh, view only attendees will have limited access to meeting features. For example, view only attendees will be able to listen to all audio and view a screen or window shared during the meeting. However, they will be unable to share audio or video, and they will be unable to see chat or other applications that are shared during the meeting. And meeting organizers will not see view-only participants in attendee accounts or reports, uh, and this feature does not support the e-discovery of data. So just be aware, if you are having some um, sessions that you don't want um, anyone to see, then just maybe turn that feature off. Uh, this feature is off by default for your users, uh, and you actually need to use PowerShell to enable this feature for your entire tenant while you're prepared to assign licenses. Okay, so next up we have an update for uh, webinars plus new meeting registration options. This is Mesher Center MC250958. 
uh, and Microsoft are excited to announce the forthcoming availability of Teams webinar capabilities beginning rollout at the end of April 2021, and they should be completed in May 2021. Uh, they should be coming soon within the next uh, week or two, I'd imagine. Um, and associated features that apply to webinars and meetings include a registration page creation with the email confirmation for registrants and reporting for registration and attendance. These capabilities will be available to users with the following licenses. This is uh, Microsoft 365 E3, E5, A3, A5, Business Standard, Business Premium. And for the rest of 2021, Microsoft is op offering temporary availability to Teams users to try the features with their existing subscription. This uh, yeah, key point is I mean, <clears throat> end of April through end of May. Uh, so this is user control, admin control, and the admin UI. Um, so how will this affect your organization? Uh, when scheduling a meeting, your users will see the webinar option on the calendar dropdown menu in the Teams desktop app. And additionally, users will be able to add registration meetings and webinars for people in your organization and outside of your organization. The registration feature will be on by default for everyone in order to view who attended the webinars. They recommend a set of the allow engagement report policy through. Uh, by default, all users within your tenant will be able to schedule webinars unless current policy configuration prohibits it. Uh, should, you push, excuse me, should you wish to restrict who can host a webinar that requires registration for everyone, you can change the who can register policy accessed in the Teams admin center. You can disable this policy tenant wide and you can enable this policy. Next up, we have uh, the ability where organizers can lock meeting. Uh, this is Meshure Center MC25164. Um, and this is uh, going to allow you within the desktop app uh, in meeting experience, organizers can choose to lock uh, the meetings to prevent subsequent um, unwanted join attempts. The users attempting to join a locked meeting by any means, such as from a web, desktop, mobile, PSTN, and devices, would not be able to do so. And there'll be a message to say that the meeting is locked. Um, this probably relates quite nicely back to the one we just spoke about with the view only attendees. So if a meeting is locked, I would imagine the view only attendees will not be able to, um, to join it, uh, which would give a nice form of control over that scenario, I think. Uh, so this will begin rolling out in mid-May and we can expect this to be completed by the end of May. Uh, when the, so how will this affect your organization? So when uh, the change is rolled out, meeting organizers will have the ability to stop. Um, so maybe you just want to update your users, let them know that this uh, capability is coming. Uh, it could be useful for some um, important meetings where people do need to connect who is actually part of that. Okay, so that's all the updates we have this week for Microsoft Teams. Thank you very much for joining me. I do appreciate it. I really hope you find these updates useful. If you do, then please let me know in the comments below or tweet me at Mark Stokes. Um, I do like to get feedback and know that people are actually receiving these well. If you have any suggestions or uh, comments on how I can improve the delivery of this, then please do let me know. I'm always willing to change to, uh, to give you the best information in the best way possible. But for now, that's the end of the video. That's the end of the team's meeting for now. Hopefully I'll be back next week and I look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye.